Mic test one good. One, two, one, two, check, check. I'm Shane Bergman. This is Impractical Brokers. I'm Jesse Roddinghouse. This is Impractical Brokers, where we're cutting through the bullshit, breaking down the gatekeeping in real estate and business, and discussing the impractical ways to be successful. Time out. You can cut that. Welcome to Impractical Brokers. Like, I mean, it's the fucking show, and then you can say... <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Impractical Brokers with Jesse Ridinghouse and Shane Bergman. Today is our first of what will be many in the future episodes where Jesse and I have candid conversations about things that are relevant uh, into real estate and things that we're seeing in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, specifically today, we have three topics that we want to discuss for you guys, starting with negotiating in this market. So most people know that the real estate market has changed. So we want to talk about how negotiating between agents has kind of altered, which affects our clients. Secondly, we want to talk about property condition and how agents need to be candid or more candid with their clients about the property condition. And third, this is going to be a more of a fun one. It's a hundred dollar investment that <laughs> Jesse and I have either made that uh, has changed our life or something that we really, really like. So Starting off, or Jesse, not. or not, or hate, or just like spend a hundred dollars on some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so starting off, let's get right into negotiating in this market and how you have seen it kind of change, Jesse, as far as let's even go back six months ago. Like what's changed in negotiations? Wow. Good morning, Shane. <laughs> Thank you. For Good morning. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm in the hot seat. I'm, I'm literally- <laughs> Yeah, I feel in... like I'm interviewing you. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Shane. Yeah, you're welcome, Thank you. Man. I'm glad Thank you can make it. Um, so, what was the question again? <laughs> negotiating, yeah, negotiating this market. Because uh, I know you do a lot of deals, so I want to know what you have seen change. Maybe the conversations that we're having with other agents and how, like, we're handling it. Yeah, I mean, clearly, what we just came out of, which um, is historically was historic and is historically never going to happen again, in a sense. I mean, those that was just in, insanity where we didn't have an opportunity. to yeah. go. Actually, the negotiations were, um, as you experienced as well, were just so off the wall, like just removing inspections and all this kind of stuff. Like that stuff's gone, yeah. you know? So we're back to what I feel is pretty traditional, you know, like what you were used to before pre-pandemic. Um, I'm sure you've experienced the same Wait, thing. And the reason like I, I, for, I think guess for context is like, Jesse, you've seen multiple real estate cycles. Like I would say mm -hmm. in my career, this is probably the third real estate cycle that I've experienced in seven years. I'd imagine you have more than that. So <laughs> I, I, but, <laughs> that, I, but I think is that, it's, wait, is that one of those things where it's like, say you're old without saying you're old. <laughs> <laughs> but like the uh, yes, experience, I, like, yeah. and I don't think, I think <laughs> agents that got their license last year only know that that cycle, that market cycle. So yeah. I think they're in for a rude awakening in this real estate cycle, if you will, but you have multiple ones. So I really just want to know like your experience into that and how you project it's going to change or is changing. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> gosh, the agents that got their eight, their license right before pandemic have just experienced like a windfall, a massive windfall yeah. of deals and whatever. And now this big, you know, Delta and how it's changing with regards to negotiation pricing and then just, just, pure deals, not getting, you know, the, as many opportunities. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, I think, I guess, like I said, it's for me, it's coming back to a level of normalcy, right? But what we just came out of that Delta feels so extreme mm -hmm. that it doesn't feel normal now, right? Like you're, like you're going back in and you're making offers that are 10% below or 15% below which in in some cases that's you know 20 30 40 60,000 sure. below and and it's like you just like like uh, the people look at you like a deer in headlights you know or or, or like the, on the agent phone. you're saying yeah i mean yeah. The agents or even your sellers or i'm i'm looking at it from both pers or all perspectives right like people just look at you or just they're just so flabbergasted by this ridiculous offer when is it really so ridiculous you know i mean right. I, I I don't know. I mean, I think if you're if you're in an, an right now and when we're in this market, when we're making offers, we're not just throwing random darts out because we're like, oh, well, we can go backwards. I think there's a little bit more substance in the agents and what they're doing, you know, and being calculated about these about these offers that could be fifty or sixty thousand dollars below. Well, it's because of A, B, and C, 
not just because we want to get a you know get a whole bunch of money off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like I don't think it's so random. I think it's I think I mean, it's sometimes calculated. I've had offers that came in and and like there's no calculation. I don't think on the offer they just <laughs> threw it out. And and I would also say that I've represented buyers in the last three months that we have just said, you know what, fuck it. Let's throw out a random number. And if they take it, great. If not, I don't care. Yeah, I have but even that, and it's actually worked. But even that random number still had some level of strategy or calculation behind it. Kind of. If the strategy was just like, if they take it, it's a great fucking deal. If not, well, I don't care. I but there was no, like, was I did strategy. not do evaluation the for them. It wasn't like we looked at it, said property is worth seven fifty. We're going to offer six ninety nine because we want to kick the sellers in the balls. It wasn't that. It was, hey, I'd pay 675 for this house of the ticket. That's awesome. If not, cool. I'll wait because I got time. Right. But, but what? Okay. So then. Which I think is, is there are buyers that have that approach where they're like, they're not calculated. There's no data behind their offer. They're saying, this is what I value the home at. This is what I'm going to offer. I don't care what the current valuation is of it. I don't care what an appraiser says it's worth. I don't care what your CMA says. I'll pay this for it. Sure. I mean, I, yesterday I got two offers on a property that's listed at 420 and one came in at 300. That's yeah, that I mean that clearly. Was, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, two night yeah, that was $120,000 off. Yeah. It was a blind offer, right? So it yeah, just came in the email. That's a joke. Low substance. Yeah, no substance at all, right? Uh, another one that came in and it was like $60,000 off. Well, it it was enough to re, uh, to invoke a response from me and say, "Hey, right now it's the sellers aren't really willing to go that number, you know?" Um, but it's still, I don't know, again, making those offers, like for you, when that one, that example you just gave, I still feel like it was within some kind of reasonable range. Yeah. It wasn't it was, like a, right. like a complete low ball just to say, like, if right. they take it. Right. And I think the, the concern is there are some buyers out there that like, you know, and I, they've told me that they don't want to offend the seller. And that's a respect line where they say, I, I'm not going to blatantly drop them this ridiculously low offer because like that if they take it great, like I'm not even going to waste anyone's time to do that. But so I don't let, think all buyers have that same level of respect. I think there are some out there and yeah, there but, are probably uh, but, agents watching this. But you, bring, but you bring up a good point. And I think um, it actually doesn't rely, it, it shouldn't be the buyer's responsibility to feel that way if they're going to affect the, the sellers. No, for sure. The I reason I say that is because the consultant, and I wanted to ask you, when you do that, how do you, I have, I know that I have a strategy when, when, when I'm talking to buyers and we're like, and we're going to, and we're thinking about even a number that's relatively, you know, within the severely reason, low, yeah. right. Um, how do you approach that? Cause I have a strategy of how I do that and what I tell, you know, my buyers and how do you handle it? So I think the conversation w I would always have with my client is like, they say, we want to offer X on the property. Mm -hmm. I would be like, okay, let's like maybe, because when I prepare this offer and when I present it to the selling agent, like I always in the, in the presentation or in the email, I do sort of justify why we're offering this, but I don't go into an extreme amount of detail. So I make sure that like if the property is lacking in certain conditions, if it needed a roof, whatever it may be, that that gives me something to kind of Substance grab onto to, to, to maybe potentially justify in the eyes of, you know, the seller and the seller's agent, why we're bringing X offer to the table. Because like, ideally, you're pretty much reiter reiterating what the listing agent should already know. Kind of, yeah. I mean, for the I've, most I've, part. You I've, know what I mean? Like if you're <laughs> telling them, hey, uh, we, we went to the house, it needs a roof, it needs AC, it needs a... They already know they that. Sh they should. You would they hope they know that, that, but some of them don't. Correct. And some of them, I think the bigger problem is, and this is a whole other tangent of a conversation, but I think a lot of those agents that list that home, maybe they were off on their valuation or whatever consultation they gave to the seller about how, what to list that that house at. And aspirationally priced is a term that our team uses a lot. And we, I am not an aspir aspirationally priced <laughs> yeah. listing agent. I, yeah. I will say no, I will not list a home Correct. that's so far off. But I don't think all agents have that. No, that definitely not. Especially regard. not in this market. So when you see that and you have this number that you know is completely way off and you go to write that offer over, and I'll flip the question on you, have you have you dropped a, an offer that's, you know, let's, let's call it 10 or 20% lower than current mm -hmm. list price? What is the reaction on the listing agent? Well, so- and you're, you're I'm going to answer. Budget. Yeah, I'm going to answer the question that I asked you the same way you did, right? Yeah. But my process is a little is is different. I actually don't physically write up the offer. If it's so low, I always tell my buyers. I say, look, I'm I work for you. So mm -hmm. if you think that this number is here, 
I'm if I if it's way off, I'm going to tell them, okay, hey, I think it's way off. But let me call the agent, have a conversation with them, and just say this is kind of where we're thinking, and this is why, right? So it's similar, but I just do it on the phone rather than send an email. Um, and the reason I do that is because. I want to create rapport with the other agent. I think it's important, you know, when you're a working courtesy. with other, yeah, it's yeah. a courtesy. And what you said, which I think is very, very true across our industry is that nobody really wants to offend anyone. You know what I mean? Except for agents that want to specifically offend other agents. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, we really don't want to offend the sellers. You know what I mean? You don't want to send something across the bow that they're just going to be like, oh, that's disgusting. And then the next thing you know, they won't work with you even if you came up another 20%. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, I think, so, and that's what I'll coach my clients on that is like, right. we can we can offer this, but like, can let's start run, a, here. run a kind of a play. Like if you go back and I work with a lot of military and I know how military buyers and sellers operate. Like if you piss me off, like you're fucking dead to me and yeah. I don't care if you come back, like it's done, it's done. Right. So if I have a, a buyer, and I know that the seller is military and they write and the buyers bring a low ball offer. That seller gets pissed off. There's no coming back from that. Yeah, but so, I, I agree with you. Yeah. And I don't think it's just it's like pigeonholed into just military. No, I 100 percent agree sure. with you because at the end of the day. But to me, the gatekeeper is the agent. And unfortunately, sometimes we have agents that are less than satisfactory and then you reach out to them and they're like, you get nothing, you know what yeah. I mean? And they're just like, shut you down and they don't care and they're, or they're on vacation and they're like, so you can't really communicate, you know, and you need to put it in writing. But most of the time, that's my strategy with regards to offers or, you know, it's just, if they are low is to say, look, let's, let me just call. How right? far off are you talking that you'll make the call where, when do you draw the line between when I, when I, when to, I actually think writing it in paper on paper? Well, because here's the thing, when I'm showing properties, right? I have a general idea of what the market is where I'm showing them, right? And you do too. Like if you're going into a particular, within a half mile or a mile or in an area, mm -hmm. you have a general idea. And I don't mean price per square foot because that's garbage. But sure. anyway, the point is you have a general idea of what the what the market is. So when you're going to a house, and that's another thing you end up with as, as becoming more and more professional in your trade, is that when you're in the house and you're looking around, you're like, oh, it needs this, it needs this. All I'm doing is sitting there doing a mental calculator, like, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and, and if they had done A, B, and C, oh, this house would have already been gone at this price, but it needs this. So, so I'm already doing that. And if they, if my buyers are like, hey, we want to offer, you know, I mean, again, it's hard to just throw arbitrary numbers out like 20%. Let's say the list, I have a listing for 500,000, let's just say. Yeah. You bring buyers through it. What number are you going to call me and throw a verbal offer? And what number are you going to actually write me an offer and present it in an email? Um, and by the way, I don't mean to downgrade doing a presentation in email because no, what, I mean I think because what I always say the to the buyers is if it's, if it's really really low, right? And I know you're asking me that specific question. If it's really really low, like let's say if it was twenty percent off of five hundred, okay. I'll call the agent. I'm not going to just fire off an offer for a hundred thousand dollars. It's a lot of work for my staff, myself, for these people signing, e-signing, sending it over, and then you know what I mean. Like to no, even have the conversation with the agent, they're going to say no, man, we're not even on the same planet. I'm like, okay, cool. I appreciate that. Well, then let me work on it. because, but if it was 10% right now in this particular market, so 50,000 off of yours, I'd be willing to write, write that it up. up. Yeah, I'd Wait, be willing to. So the problem to, with that, yeah. I think is, if yeah, because, you call me and say, hey, I have clients that want to offer $400,000. Do you think it's worth it? I'm not the seller. I'm the seller's representative. But at the end of the day, my client might say yes. Maybe we've had that conversation before, so I know their number. True. But maybe I'm also an agent that has a high amount of ego, and there's not a fucking chance I'm going to let my listing sell for $400,000. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I'm going to straight up and right. say, no, Jesse, fuck off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a verbal call. But right. if you send me an email, yeah. say, hey, here's my client's offer for $400,000. I now have to present that to my seller. Or not. No, I because I will ask. And and no, it has to but be I presented. Mean, a checkbox right. Yeah. Or thing. not. Right. Yeah. Like maybe or not. Yeah. But, but that's like my approach on it. And and I and that's where I think there's maybe some concerns yeah, out but there in the market. Yeah. You as the consultant for the seller, you're going to know even within a two, five, yeah. seven percent range for the most part of what the floor and the ceiling is. Right. On the pricing. But I'm for thinking if part. you're going to bring an offer at 400,000, I know my, my let's say my, my seller is going to say no. But we can maybe go from there. Right, right, right. But I would. At but least, I would. I would say, yeah, write it up. It doesn't matter if it's three. Well, step, yeah, and, write it and up. again, so for me to I make wanna... that call, right? Which I know it's crazy. We're in real estate, and we have to pick up the phone and talk to each other. I mean, I know it's crazy nuts. for me. It's yeah. such bullshit. Like, yeah. Just text me. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, even having that engagement and and knowing that the other agent says, "Hey, you know," because some agents are like, 
stone and they're like, oh, just put it in writing. Yeah. Okay. If that's, if you want it in writing, I'm going to put it in writing. No problem. Like, but again, they, I reached out to them and I've connected and they, they said, put it in writing. No problem. Cause I do always say as well to the buyers, Hey, look, to make a substantial play, it's got to be in writing. The role play that because, call. I want to know what that call sounds like too, though. Because I think, I bet your approach is real soft, not to the point of like, hey, I got clients that are. So, oh, you mean like if we were going to make an offer on so my listing, listing 500,000, you got 400. buyers that want to submit 400K. So yeah, I would, I would basically just say, hey, Shane, we just got done looking at ABC, right? And it was great and my buyers like it, but right now their number is a lot lower than where your where your asking price is. Okay. There's reasons why. It's because, you know, it needs a roof, it needs this and, then, and we took that into consideration. Um so we're we're ready to, you know, make put it in in writing and send it over. Do you think that's something at this point that your seller would even consider to even entertain? Entertain. Yeah, or even get into conversations. And usually I always say this too. The reason why I'm calling you is because I respect you and your time and I don't want and my buyers respect the sellers. I mean, they like their house. They don't want to piss them off. Yeah. So I usually say those two things as well, because, you know, to me, I'm like trying to gain rapport with someone else that I work with and I'm not trying to be an a-hole. I mean, that's the biggest thing is don't be an asshole, you know? So I don't know. Again, there's a few people, some people are like, why are you wasting my time? Why yeah. are you on the phone? Just fucking write it up and send it to me. And, and that happens. It yeah. really does. And you know what? It's okay. Like, that's cool. I will do that. But that's how I traditionally do it in those cases, which isn't, as often, it's. I think it's more. Yeah, those are rare, rare than, I, I than it like. is. But I know, do like common. the courtesy play of it. How you're basically saying, "Hey, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my client's time. Would the sellers entertain this offer? Is it, is it worth? Or it? even close? Do you, do you think it's even in the realm? Because if we can great. put it in writing, and this is where they start, then hey, because look, at the end of the day, I might also say, look, you and I are here to facilitate something. If you think that we can begin to facilitate something, then I'll write it up. You know what I mean? That could be 400, it could be 440. I don't know. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you and I are the, are the ones in between these two people. You know what I mean? And we want to be able to help them get to whatever that, that desired result is. But, yeah. but at the end of the, like I said, I think when agents stonewall you or roadblock you or each other, it's just. It starts it, the conversation off. But it just makes it more road. challenging. Yeah. What the, get out of the way. Dude. <laughs> like That seller might take 440. But yeah. if you're but if you're stonewalling me, he ain't gonna take 440. You know right. I mean? And then we're gonna go buy another house. Like, just get out of the way, you know? So that's why I usually take that approach as okay. a, as opposed to logistically writing it all up. That's all. Yeah. Just because I think race because you know, look, contracts on cars is something I've always said, like, hey, you're writing a contract right away. You're trying mm -hmm. to do it really fast because time is of the essence. They always teach you. But right now it's like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. You like that house? Cool. Well, when that, I get home or well, my, how, my how, assistant. Has this right ever now. happened where you've done a verbal? So let's run that same scenario. Hey, yeah, you know, of course, yeah, 400,000. Yeah, write it up. And then like, I'm excited because I'm getting an offer. No, never. And then you never even write that shit. No, no, never, never. I, but, I don't. And that's it, happened on my listings but, where I've had buy Like a, an interest. Say, hey, we have clients that want to write this offer up at X. Should we do it? Generally, my response of, yeah, you should. But if it's not in writing, it does, I'm never it's presenting never. it to my seller. Nope. If I don't have a, well, an actual I, contract. I thought you were asking me with regards to the buyer. I would, even if I had that conversation with you and you're like, yeah, that looks good. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I would never tell the buyer. I would never tell them that it's like a verbal sure anything. Thing. Yeah. I'd yeah. say, hey, look, they said they might entertain it. Let's go ahead and move forward with putting it in writing. You're like, I don't want to get their hopes up at all in that sense, because just like you said, you send it over and they're like, oh, we got one for $1 more and we took that one. And yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. So that, that was good. So I like the, the courtesy of the call. Um, making sure that the the price is in the, the realm of it. Try not to start off a negotiation or conversation with like a an argument. I feel like goes a long way with another agent. Um, it's and, hard. It's that's really hard though to gauge that because yeah. as you know, you like you're in the middle of whatever it is you're doing in your day. So for me, reaching out where I'm thinking I'm trying to do a courtesy, I'd want to text if I'm being. Well, honest. I, I know that, but I might text. Hey, do you have a minute? Or like, imagine me texting you what I just said to you. You were already would have shut down after the first word. <laughs> like you're not. Yeah, gonna... I would have been like, "Thanks for texting me, not calling." Because like I know, how... <laughs> I know. But my, what I was going to say is, it's super. I would have. I would perceive the text as more courtesy of my time than anything else. Right. That's what I was trying to say. Is trying to gauge what the agents, um, what is it, A, B, or C? You know what I mean? Like yeah. what kind of personality they are. It, it's challenging to do that because if I did call someone and they were like, "You're wasting my time," like you know what I mean? It could happen. Yeah. It, it really Probably could. Has, and then yeah. and then I. Fucked it up for my buyers, you know, because the agent doesn't like me. Because I'm like, oh shit, I was just trying to do something good, 
And that happens. It really does happen, yeah. you know? And then you text someone and they're like, you know, it just depends. No, yeah. a situational. Yeah. All right, so we're going to move on. So that yeah. was a, that was good negotiation kind of changes the way it or has not. changed. Or not. But, I mean, think it, <laughs> but it's good they like hear from that because I don't yeah. think everyone that's listening to this has experienced what it's like to negotiate in a market where they're not offering ask or, or above, right? So it's now, it, I mean, I think yeah, that's, it's backwards. That, that's helpful to kind of yeah. give people a gauge, like where is the respect line in the agent to agent industry? Because you've been doing this for a while. So I think that that's super helpful. Saying um, you're old without saying you're old again. <laughs> How, how long have you been doing real estate anyway? I don't Stop at saying I'm old without <laughs> saying you're, I'm old. All right, Let's next topic. We're, we're moving on. We're moving on. This. All right, so the, the next one was uh, one that Jesse is super passionate about. It's the, it's the property condition. And if oh, you want to reverse very, it, I'll let you ask me the question and then holy, we can kind of play it back very, since you're, I am very passionate since you're way more about it. So yes. the topic uh, is property condition. And then what we wrote is agents just being brutally honest. Well, property condition is just an issue in itself. And there's a litany of things. Like I could go all the way back to even pre-list and the sellers taking care of their property. I mean, maybe that's, let's let's go down that path. I mean, like, let's talk about how you handle those conversations. So like context to this topic is you go like with the same buyers you're, we were talking about earlier and you see homes that are just not in like show condition or like- dog shit? Dog shit, yeah. right? Like, in, but, but maybe, you know, I mean, there's always like circumstances as to maybe why. But potentially there was room for that seller or that seller's agent to maybe modify it or change the the overall experience for the buyer. Is that kind of where? Yeah, we're... I should. Because really like, I mean, some some people. I really should retract that statement of dog shit because it's okay. I mean, it's it, it, well, we know when, but, when a house but, has a lot of potential and that it could. They, there are houses they that themselves. are that fall into that bucket of dog shit, and it's and it's and it's not. I, I hate to say that and and project anything against those people's, you know, whatever the yeah. scenario was, but. And what I, what I mean by that, and I'll come up with better terminology for that, is that <laughs> the less, the horseshit. very, very less than attractive homes, yeah. right? And and the, when they're in severe condition, um, it's challenging for those sellers. They want to get the highest price. The agents that are maybe taking on listings that are hungry and they need inventory, but yet they're priced it way over. Like, I mean, I went and showed one the other day and it was probably a hundred grand over what it should be. But, you know, and they were getting offers, actually, because I reached out to the agent, did yeah. a courtesy, because my buyers didn't like it, but I liked it to renovate it and sell it. And I'm like, hey, yep. I, you know, I would I would offer this. And he's like, yeah, they've already said no to a couple of these. And I figured as much because investors out there, they they look at yeah, houses they look like for that. The, the and they're, they're like, hey, properties. I'm giving you this number because of this reason, right? Um, but the funny thing is, is what it's, it, you know, a house that is in that tragic of scenario, I don't know that there's a gap. You, you like, in other words, if they're listed at four twenty five and I'm offering three fifty, right? That's seventy five thousand mm-hmm. dollars delta. It's not much, but at the end of the day, w- that gap can't be much more than like just small percentage points off the investor number of three fifty. Do you, you, you like? Yeah. So I what think- what I mean is, for instance, if they're at four fifteen on the mar- on the market or whatever I said four twenty five, and they come down, oh, let's do twenty thousand dollar drop. We're at four oh five, or you know, I mean, it's just not significant enough. You know, so properties that fall in those buckets, those conditions, they need to get to the investor number because most of the houses like that in that condition are cash buys. That are no, in, most so people can't even get a let's loan. Differentiate for it. between distressed properties and then properties yeah, that are now, just not show sure, ready. Because sure, like yeah. distressed, pro- that's a whole other conversation. Let's yeah, not talk sure. about that. Let's talk about you look at. There's two listings on the market, same neighborhood, uh, same floor plan, same year, same general condition, but one is in tip top shape. It was cleaned. It was staged. It was pristine, had mm-hmm. professional photos, the whole nine, you know, on that. And then the other one, like you could see the beds weren't made in the photos and you get to the house and maybe there's dog hair, whatever it is. Like, yeah, I guess the conversation that I'd like to get into is how are you handling that? How do those two homes, maybe it's the mm-hmm. seller that are there, they're like, one's just more concerned about pricing it appropriately and keeping it in condition. Maybe one's just a little bit more sloppy, but I think a lot of that has to do with the agent setting it, the tonality. No, it only has to do with the agent. And so how do That's you handle a, that convert? How would we handle that? Like, yeah. I mean, it, it's a hundred percent the agent. I mean, they are the ones that are leading these people down a path of a desired result. So it's a hundred percent the agent. If those two houses in the same neighborhood and one's got towels laying around and just doesn't show well and dog hair or whatever, it's the agent's fault. 
period. Like I don't, it, you can't blame the sellers for the way that they live or whatever. I mean, everyone, you know, yeah, if, you, if they, I throw my towel on the floor and that's the way I like to have it dry, like that's, that's, that's okay. I mean, that's hey, great that, if, as long whatever, as you're not trying to my, show it to strangers that's not that my business. Buy it. But if you're in the business of selling properties and marketing them, then it is a hundred percent the agent. Um, so back to answer your question, <laughs> uh, that conversation is not always easy. I mean, yeah. um, y- you know, I, for me, it's, I find it predominantly pretty easy because I usually tell them, I mean, look, if, 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 and this is going to be a poor analogy, I guess, but you don't go into the doctor's office and the doctor says, Hey, you need to stop doing eating sugar or drinking coffee or whatever. And you're like, ah, you know what? I'm going to eat dr- sugar and drink some coffee. Yeah, Maybe I'll you switch know? to Mountain Dew or like, you're not like, I'm the doctor of real estate. So you need to listen to me because yeah. I will get you to that desired result, which is you want to sell your house, right? This is what we need to do. You need to pick up your towels. You need to pick up this. We need to make, you know, need to move this furniture. You need to get this out of the way. Um, You know, a lot of for years, and you've heard this too, is that people be like, oh, you got to take your personal pictures down. So I don't, I don't give two S's about, are we allowed to say shit? I don't Uh, give two shit. No, we can't say shit, but we can say fuck though. Okay. (laughs) I don't, like- you know, if you have a family photo wall and it's got a hundred photos on it and it's cluttery, I don't I don't mean it doesn't look good, but if it's a lot of a lot, then I'll say, Yeah, can we take some of that down? You know? But So you're doing like a case by case basis at yeah, every I mean, I'm, yeah, seller I mean, you meet, you're going through. Do you have a checklist? Like a, do you have a uh, it's all I mean, man. I know you got a a, a lot of experience. <laughs> But like, I imagine you're going through, you've got like your script, your routine that, yeah. you know, you're going through and you're already like, you know, feeling the room, knowing what you need to talk about. Yeah. And like, let's say the, you know, the, it's a, it's an, it's an old lady that maybe you don't want yeah. to, well, like, how do you handle So that's that a really good, that's a good one. And the reason why that one is good, because when it comes to older folks or what have you, a lot of times they've, they've carried, they have a ton of yeah, stuff. Yeah, hoard, they're hoarders. Well, not even just hoarders, but the, you know what I mean? Like they've just, they have a lot of things yep. and- um, it's challenging, but I'm there. And, and that's usually when I'm like, Hey, look, don't worry. I will be here when the, when the photographer gets here, we may be here for like two hours, three hours, but I'm moving stuff, you know, physically. And that's a lot of the things that most people don't get about real estate agents. And a lot of agents are yeah. now making it very social that they take a broom and they're sweeping and they're moving furniture. Like that's real shit. Like yeah. that's really what we're doing. <laughs> you know, like we're, I feel like mover sometimes, you know, but um, but that's what we're there to do. So yes, I do have those conversations with them. Like, but I try to also tell them, Hey, I'm here to like, not literally hold your hand, but I'm going to hold your hand through this process and make sure that we get it as stage worthy as possible. Yeah. I have had some that, you know, it's tough, man. I, have I like one- the, I do like that analogy though, the, yeah. the doctor analogy. Like you go to the doctor because you trust the doctor's knowledge, you, experience, you whatever it may be. And I'm, I'm hiring this doctor to make sure that my health is okay. I think it, the same you know, in real estate should be like, you're hiring an agent that, you know, maybe this is the first or third house that you've sold as the seller, but as an agent, we've sold hundreds. So it's like relying on that experience, I think is super helpful. So good. Cause that's another topic for another day because the doctor analogy works extraordinary inside of our industry on so many different levels. As I've used it before as like a commission objection. Yeah. But like to the, so to the point of like the property condition, it, it starts with the agent. We go through, I think being, candid and brutally honest with that seller is going to go a long way because otherwise you're just doing a disservice to that client. You're going to potentially leave money on the table. It's going to you know, be an awful experience for a lot of those buyers. And so what we as a team do, we have, so I'll, I'll go through a listing and I will meet people and they'll start asking me these questions. Should we remove these photos? Should we take this? Away? And I back off a little bit. I say, look, I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. I'm not a designer. I'm not a stager. I don't really have that eye for that. We have people yeah, on our yeah, team yeah. that specifically go to every listing and provide this. So even if you didn't have a team, you could hire an interior designer or yep. a stager to come through and actually be the person of the point of reason, the voice of reason. Yeah. That get, so that's what we do on all of our listings. So we yeah, have someone come great. through. We've got a checklist for everything that goes. When it comes to the photos on the walls, that's a question that we get a lot. And I think as a team, the words we use, minimalistic, yeah. And anonymous. Yeah. So when you look at the photos of that home, I don't want to see clutter and I don't want to know what kind of family lives there because people, the first showing is always online. Yep. So they're going to look at those photos. So that, that's what, what we talk about the photos with that. Yeah. I think more importantly too, because that's stuff that we all deal with, with regards to like just the aesthetics of the walls and this and of the house and stuff. But you know what, 
what I feel gets missed more than anything about the condition of the home is the logistics of the home. And what I mean by that is the roof, the AC, the plumbing, the electrical, like, like the heavy hidden the item. shit that is non-functional. I mean, it, it, it's like I want to go and when I'm sitting down with the sellers and I'm saying, hey, have you pull out the honeydew list? Let me let me see your honeydew list, right? Has has it accrued for the last five years? You know, what's still on that list? Because to me, what you wished your house had is kind of what I need to get done potentially in order to sell it. In right? order to get potentially. Hmm. But the logistical Especially side. Especially now it, in this market where buyers are getting picky. Very picky. Yeah, particular. They, but but we say, and I and I always say buyers should be picky. But when I say picky, like that's just like tongue in cheek, like it, they should be, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? We're yeah, saying I mean, it like, we're saying it like it's a problem, like it's a fault. Like it's an inconvenience. That. I'm, you, I want to be picky. Preference on you go to the store and you want to, you know, you're being picky about the kind of shoes that you buy or whatever. Well, of course I want to be picky about the house I'm going to buy. Yeah. But the logistics of the house to me is the most important. And I think the most overlooked issue with agents. I just don't like when you go into a house, the agents need to educate themselves with understanding about plumbing, mm -hmm. understanding about electric, understanding of the, oh, if is the roof, how old oh, is it? How, oh, is it how, insurable? How, oh, your, your roof is only 12 years old or whatever. And, and the, of course we're going to, I can't wait to talk to our insurance guy, but um, the insurance aspect of it is many times the objection, right? Is a, wow, that was That's a, a fast good car. car. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, the, usually like the objection is that the seller says to you, oh, well, I have insurance. Okay, cool. That's good that you have insurance, but someone buying your house needs to obtain new insurance, yeah. which means new inspections, new this. Just because you have insurance and it's been able to renew and your insurance company doesn't know that, or you know what I mean? They're not watching your roof, you know? So your roof's 12 years old. So when it gets reassessed, you may not be able to get insurance. So yeah. as an insurance, as, as the agent, that's what I mean by the I think it's, it's, and that's, that again comes with experience. Those conditions. Your yes. insight on knowing like what other homes have gone through as far as the struggles and providing that to a, to a seller, to a client, like as an agent, as a you know consultant, that's the information that we need to be having with, with yeah. sellers even before a, like a signed listing agreement, even before we ever talk about when it's going to go on the market. Like you need to know you, those. And you know, items. what's funny about what you just said is I think you could take, when you, when you take to me, I take that approach. I am trying to provide value to them because I know what the F I'm doing. Yeah. Right. There are agents that come in there and will just say, Oh no, we can list I, it. No, oh, let me discount sure. this. Oh, and, looks great. and boom. Yeah, yeah. And next of thing course. you know, you lost it, but you know what? You, that is business you don't want. If they're not willing to 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 listen to what you're gonna, because those hurdles are gonna hit them. Yeah, it's like just because they avoided the roof now doesn't mean they're not avoiding it at the price and then the reduction and then the non closing. Like, it's a nightmare. Yeah. But they don't know that up front. So at the end of the day, there are some people that you know may not. I mean, I I don't I'm not saying that I. People usually appreciate your authenticity and what you're I telling think, yeah, them. Yeah, be like being honest. Yeah, shouldn't it be like as an agent, we shouldn't be afraid to be brutally honest with a with a seller because that's what they're bringing us in the house for. Yeah, they might never. not like what we have to say, but never. I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you what you need, need to hear. To. Yeah, and not only that, in relation to price, because as you know, aesthetics help helps you know help everything inc help increase a pricing from a marketability yeah. standpoint, but logistics helps sustain a price. Yeah. Like that's how I always approach it. Because at the end of the day, if you, if you can make, you can have the prettiest house and be like, oh, cool. But if it's got a fucked up AC roof, yeah. roof like, up, yep. then your price is going backwards. So, and the hard part is, is when people look at it like, oh, well I did a new kitchen. <laughs> okay. But you didn't do your $15,000 roof. Which doesn't necessarily yeah. mean, it just means that we're going to come backwards potentially because that's something you got that a nice needs to nail get polish that. on, but your toes are fucked. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Anyway. I mean, and, that, and that's another thing that could relate also to like negotiations because I've gone through this. Uh, actually, I have a showing this evening with a guy that we went through the house. The roof is 15 years old, the AC is 12 years old. And so, in the contract we wrote, you know, it's contingent on a new roof by a professional roofer and a new air conditioner. And the sellers, you can imagine what they did. They said, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. That was a week and a half ago. They circled back last night and said, hey, is your buyer still interested? Yeah. But wouldn't, and, and we'll jump onto the next the, topic yeah. from here, but I'm curious about that. Since you just said that, are you, would you, you added that in so that it's inclusive inside the price and that means that it would get like, but it would still be a credit. No, no. So I actually so wrote an addendum to the to contract for the seller to put on a new roof prior to closing by a licensed and professional roofer. Yeah. Same with air conditioner. 
Really? It's contingent on the clothes. Yeah, yeah see, I, I would take a different approach on that. I want the money. Well, here's the bigger problem. The reason, the reason and it's in the conversation. Well, it's insurance. Out. It's insurance. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the it was, AC is a smaller if it argument, to be the roof is yeah. going to be a problem. Yeah, and in the you know two years ago, year and a half ago, you used to be able to get insurance. No, I know, yeah, and you're right. You're 100. percent So right. like the roof, yeah. and I already think. So here's the AC, other thing. not so much, but the roof. Yeah. AC is yeah. is old, and we were just throwing it in there. But I think the sellers are already aware that the roof is old, and they are already getting those right. objections. So they think they were prepared for it. Right. But now it's like put your. But their agent it, should like, and their and their agents did really really great job yeah. about it. It was conversations we had. It was one of those that I didn't call her. We actually were texting, and we could still build amazing rapport via the text, like because we've worked <laughs> together in the past. But if sure, it was yeah. the first time, she might be like, "Why is this, you know, guy yeah, 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 texting yeah, me these questions? Yeah. You should call." But either way, it's one of those contracts that I think are it's actually going to come to fruition, and the buyer's going to get a new roof and AC out of it, and they're still paying below. The list yeah, and, and at the end of the day, if your deal fell apart, these are things that needed to they be should done have been doing at the house anyway. anyway. Yeah, they're and out a little bit money. it will only help them yeah. get the right price whenever that is at the end. So, no, for sure. So yeah, so, yeah so going to brutally either, honest. Either candid. approach is a good approach. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I will in the bet that those listing agents did go in and did breach or did brief the seller on yeah. these things. And the seller probably took the stance of, well, let's, well, let's try. try. Or maybe I don't, like maybe they, they don't have the capital to do a roof. Yep. So that's where other creative measures could come into play. Yeah. But definitely it's a conversation that should be had. And I don't think enough agents are having those. Yeah, and, and and agents a lot of times will take that approach too and say, you know what, we know that this needs to be done, like roof and AC, yeah. like that. Let's you just know, see. Let's throw it on there. We understand that we're going to have to come backwards. So I mean, not not all agents are, you know, I mean they're doing the right yeah. consult too, but yeah. So so it's a good one. That was a good topic. And then last last one, the fun one. Oh God, really fun. So Jesse and I spoke. L last night about it and I, I sent you a text. I didn't really speak. I sent him a text. We don't speak I at all actually. I sent you, yeah, because I- <laughs> We don't really talk imagine. much at all. This is supposed to be a 20 minute show. <laughs> um, so I texted him last night and said, hey, let, like for a hundred dollars, what's an investment that's something you've bought oh. for less than a hundred dollars that has changed your life? And I was like, why don't you think about two things? Because we're going to mention it on the show. So here we are on the show. I want one thing that you have spent a hundred dollars or less on that has changed your life. <laughs> uh it's my marriage license my get the yeah. fuck dude that's <laughs> i wait, come okay. on all right no, it man. is literally my marriage license. it's also a great story because it was in las vegas so it's got all this inscription Can't on it it's, it's, it's incredible but uh no i mean that is an investment that has completely changed my my life completely professionally personally it's just made uh i've become the best me so because the wife, not the license, correct? Or is that is it because of no? Of because of license. Because you have the license to, to, to fly. Like I can see you at a bar. Have, like yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, married. I just carry I that a, around with me. It's yeah. laminated. Let's see it. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's no, a, no. That's, that's a very thoughtful. One. Yeah. No. I mean, I just that was one that was non-business related. That is just like eh, it's oh, it's wow. very important to me. So top that asshole. I, I mean, literally, you <laughs> just nailed into it because mine is a. a uh, uh, an attachment for your toilet, a bidet attachment for your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and it truthfully is, I don't know if you guys have, have uh, experienced that. And, and uh, if my wife listened to any of my content, which she doesn't, so I'm totally cool talking <laughs> about this. Safe. This is a conversation I do bring up yeah. um, often. And it's about how like affordable these bidet attachments are and how like people don't like talking about it, but it, it What's is a bidet. Did you say a bidet attachment? Bidet attachment. So the stream of water that shoots into your to your butt but, to to it's a it's super oh, hygienic. Oh, your house has a bidet. I have two attachments. Yeah. Oh, you have two bidets. Yeah, not a bidet. So a bidet. Oh, is you actually, mean the attachment to the toilet that? That's what I said, Jesse, like five minutes ago. But you said it was a bidet. But many people may not have a bidet. Did you guys get it? Did you, bidet. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know if bidet. I could oh, okay. talk to the third wall. <laughs> A bidet attachment. You can go on Amazon. So like yes. Tushy is a manufacturer yes. of these bidet attachments. Yeah. I think it's like $60. You get it. You put it on your toilet and it'll fucking change your life. But doesn't it splash on the wall and like shoot around? No, and dude. Like, it isn't shoots spray? in your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's not. <laughs> is it like bird bath around your toilet? Like there's no, water man, everywhere? It's, it's, a, it's such a, I mean, it's a weird thing to talk about because it is kind of like. You know, Actually, it's, it's a great thing to talk about. It's because gross, but, but I think if you were to use it. You would realize like one, if you're you know concerned about saving money or saving the planet, maybe because of paper, like the bidet is the way to go. Hygiene also, like it's way better to shoot a stream of water in your butt, clean off the poop versus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so listen, actually I'm laughing because 
one of the things that, um, that that's my answer. One, that one is of the, my answer. One of the, the things Bidet under a hundred dollars that I actually thought of, and I was like, no, I can't say this because Shane will be like, well, that's not just one purchase; it's a consistency. Was wet wipes. So that this was is, one of the things because it's the greatest. But let's talk about how much you're spending life. on wet wipes. How <laughs> like, like, like the manufacturing this, side going? of wet wipes. I'm just saying you should. I'm gonna send you a bidet attachment. It'll change your life. I just I just encourage you to. To try send it. me the Amazon link. Yeah, we'll send I'm you a link for that. But that, I mean, that was my I'm answer. Cur- under hundred dollars. That's amazing. If anyone has made it this far in the show and they've heard this part about it, and I'm you sorry. have a bidet attached. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> no, I, I would love to hear what people yeah. think about it because it is a super polarizing topic. People I can tell in this room are appalled that I've even mentioned it. Actually, I actually it's <laughs> no the fact that you brought it up and it's the correlation to what we're talking a lot about with real estate. I actually am very interested because one of the things that, and not to go totally back to real estate, but with regards to what you just brought up, is that toilet paper, which I I don't have any toilet paper in my entire house, but toilet paper is such an issue because people use too much of it and then it clogs the pipes and then you have to, you know, I mean, and then septics and all this other stuff. And then you go on to wet wipes and I'm such a fanatic on wet wipes that literally people do not read the label because it says do not flush no. on 90% of wet wipes. Yep. I know we could go in whole segment about wet wipe. Our I mean, butts. I, I, I mean, lived on submarines but, for 10 years. But the so whole I point of, it with so I'm wipes. very interested now that to see, to, to hear about this, uh, uh, this bidet attachment, because that is something that's really, I mean, you're always throwing this stuff down the sewage, you know what I mean? And it, it, it's part of taking care of your house, which is what we were. It is, but it's week. also like, remember during the pandemic when, when toilet paper was like, the highest commodity, like you couldn't find anywhere. Oh, I, I was laughing unit. because yeah. I, I, no, I don't use toilet. Yeah, paper. I know. I don't either. I don't I don't use either. like literally five squares. I don't either. And I'm good to go. It's just a yeah. little dry, a little dry pass. So enough yeah. on the, the, uh, the bidet attachment. Well, great, great. But it's great, a great thing. You guys should all buy one. Yeah. Um, well, you thank want, you for that. Yeah. That yeah. Was, you're welcome. Huge, you want to close yeah. this out? Get us, get us out of here. Uh, yeah. So if, if you are still here, uh, we're thankful and sorry Definitely. at the same time. Uh, no, but, uh, we appreciate your guys's time. Um, Certainly, we we love doing this, but if you engage, comment, you know, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, if you want to. Yeah. Um, but commenting is more important if you engage with us. Like, we love talking about this stuff, but also getting engaged with uh, people that are watching it so that we can answer any questions or get any feedback or share any for sure. stories or whatever. But anyway, we, we thank you for being here, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.